Hey, Tim Stasio here. It is Psychrometric Saturday once again, and we've been talking about sensible heat ratio, the scale that's here on the right side of the, of the psychrometric chart. Now, what we're saying by sensible heat ratio, that is a little formula that we do whenever we do a heat load calculation. We take our sensible heat load and divide it by our total heat load. So say, for example, we've got 25,000 BTUs of total load that our heat load calculation spits out to us. Out of that 25,000, it says that 20,000 of it is sensible. Well, we divide our sensible heat into our total heat, 20,000 divided by 25,000, and we come up with a 0 0.80 sensible heat ratio. That means that 80% of that load is sensible, the other 20 is latent. Well, what do we do with that? Well, then the very next thing we need to do is find 0 0.80 on our sensible heat scale, and we're gonna draw a dot right there. Then we're gonna connect the line from that dot, and we're gonna draw a line through the dot that represents our indoor design conditions. Usually that 75 degree dry bulb, around 55 degree dew point. So we're gonna make sure that line intersects both of those dots and that line goes completely through the chart. And here's what we're saying. We divide this chart into four quadrants, one, two, three, and four. We're saying that as long as our supply air temperature that comes out of that air handler, comes off of that coil, is can be plotted in this quadrant right here, that as long as we move enough of that air, we're gonna be able to maintain conditions. So how much air is our target? Well, for that, we gotta do a little bit of math, but you've already done this formula here. Remember the sensible heat formula? We've been talking about that throughout the series. The sensible heat formula says that sensible heat equals CFMs times 1.1 times delta T, or a temperature drop right here, a dry bulb temperature drop. We've done this formula before. But what if we already know our sensible heat? but we're just needing to solve for CFM instead. We gotta use a little bit of eighth grade pre-algebra and we gotta flip that formula around and here's what it looks like. CFMs equals BTU sensible, which we already know. Then we divide that by 1.1 times our delta T and we have to do that first. So we almost have everything we need to do this formula. We have to make a little bit of an assumption though. We have to assume what our delta T is gonna be. So what's a fair assumption of what our temperature drop between a return of supply is gonna be? Would 20 degrees sound pretty fair? Let's plug in 20 degrees. So we would take 1.1 times our delta T or 20 degrees. We do that math and then we divide that into 20,000, which is our BTU sensible heat. We come up with 909 CFM. That is our target CFMs for this load calculation under these conditions. Now, what we're saying though, is that the whole unit needs to move 909 CFMs, but what about each room? We've only done a block load calculation here. Well, in order to determine how much of that 909 CFMs needs to get distributed to each room, we have to do a room to room load calculation, which means that we do this whole process for every single room in the house. Now that seems pretty in depth, right? And it is. And that's why you should be using software like Conduit Tech to do your heat load calculations. They can do not only a block load calculation, but they can also do a room to room calculation as well. Next time we're gonna do some diagnostics. What if you walk up on a unit and it's not keeping up? It's not either maintaining temperature or humidity. How can you diagnose this using this process right here? We'll talk about that next time on Psychrometric Saturday.